Is Marilyn, Andy you're coming? on tonight. Okay. Thank you. So far. Right. Okay, Larry, you're all set. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the February 23rd, 2021 meeting of the Town Council Charter Review Committee. In accordance with Massachusetts general law, this meeting is being videotaped and audio recorded, as well as being remotely broadcasted via Zoom webinar. If there is anyone in our viewing audience who is taping this meeting, would you please announce yourself? Hearing none, our first order of business is who would love to take minutes? Marilyn, whose turn is it? Is it my turn? Actually, not yet. Um, according to my list, <laughs> the, um, Andy was last time, you know, Jeff would be next. I, I will volunteer to do it then. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> we have minutes from the meeting of February 2nd, 2021. Do I hear a motion to accept? So moved. Is uh, so moved by Jeff? Yes. Second? I'll second it. And Ralph seconds. Uh, any suggestions, corrections, or additions? Um, Larry, I, um, I see that Andy is now on board, so I'm back to alternate again. Um, but there was some question one, about two, a section you're of still the on. You're, still, you're still good. Oh, Phil's not here. Phil's okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Andy's here. Not be here. <laughs> Hi, Andy. <laughs> there was a question. Here, there was a question uh, in his minutes that we need to talk about. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You want me to bring it up? Sure. Let me let me grab my copy. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, the one I think is a, a, an issue in his discussion of Article Two, Section Six. If everyone sees, and maybe there was an amended one, about halfway through the paragraph, in parentheses is a number two, followed by in parentheses, but shall be prepared. Is that in your copy? Yes. Yeah. That, that whole phrase, ending in codification process, should be eliminated. Yeah. Andy, you with us? He just got back. Okay, he just got back. Okay. Dr. Frazier? Yep, yep. You have it in front of you? Just came uh, screaming into the driveway here. Okay. <laughs> so you're on that our Article 2, Section 6 question, right. is that right? About halfway through your paragraph, after the number two in parentheses is a phrase, but shall be prepared in such a way to clearly identify the changes be proposed in the codification process. Yep. Uh, that, that phrase and the number two should be deleted. Okay. Okay. Anything else? The rest looks okay. Okay. Yeah, it looks fine. And Jeff, you will accept that uh, amendment to your motion with that yes. particular change. And Ralph, you'll agree as a second? Yes. Excellent. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, William Fonseca? Yes. Larry Levine, yes. Jeffrey Bosworth? Yes. Marilyn Richards? Yes. Tom Christensen? Yes. Ralph Page? Yes. Andy Fraser. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, we have a lot to do. In the last week, we have received some citizen suggestions again. Um, but rather than getting to them, um, I'd like to go over a number of you have sent me revisions which I tried to incorporate in the revised document that I sent to you on Sunday 
Uh, there are some suggestions by some of you that I didn't revise, and I'd like to address those as well. Okay. Um, the first one is from Dr. Bosworth, who spoke to <clears throat> section 3.2, powers and duties number one. And if you all go to that section <clears throat> and just for the public, that is under the town manager's powers and duty. <clears throat> and Jeff raised the question. He thought we changed line seven to read shall become effective with the majority instead of the words unless rejected by. And I looked at my notes and Jeff, I, I didn't see that particular change. And um, I, 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 I do sleep at some of our meetings. But <laughs> Does anyone recall that or? Um, Again, what, what word? Section 2? Section 3-2, Article 3, Section 2. Powers. These are powers and duties of the town manager. Item number one, the seventh line. I have no changes. Me too. I have no changes as well. Uh, Jeff, was there something we missed? Well, we, we had lengthy discussion on it, right. and I had um, and I had crossed out on mine that we changed it from un, unless rejected by to change that to with. Well, that would have reversed the, um, it would change where the town council would have the right to reject within that period of time to where they would have an affirmative duty to confirm an appointment of those particular uh, positions. Right. And according to my notes, uh, we revisited that section more than once, and I don't have any. Um, I don't have any notes to that effect that there was even a motion. Okay. I know that this was the section that I got confused about because in my notes I have see the motion and the motion that I was referencing ultimately was Jeff's motion for a change to this particular language. Perhaps that's where Jeff you might get a little bit of the confusion has come in because you were trying to you know um, submit a motion that we would agree with uh -huh. um, changing the language in this section. So that's the only way I can think that you might have come up with a different word. Okay. okay. Uh, hearing none, so Jeff, are you okay? You may not agree with it, but um, I, I don't recall, and nor do I have anything written down, that yeah. a motion was voted upon and even whether it passed or not i i don't i don't remember now because this was early on but i sure. i just know that i had this crossed out in the word with written in there so okay all right i'll, I'll move on <coughs> um and jeff your your suggestions i think i addressed about your other typo corrections. Yeah, those were changed. And, oh, and then you asked whether in the definition section, whether you, uh, 
we would consider that the first word or words should be in bold type to make them stand out. Uh, I'm looking for input from other people. Sure. <laughs> the words you're referencing, unless another meaning is clearly apparent, that section? No, section under, under the one. definition section. Right, section 1.1-7. Right. Yep. Yeah. So you if, if you go down, I presume, Jeff, you're suggesting that the word charter and oh. codification, then emergency, then full council, those particular words at the beginning you'd want in bold? Well, I would just make, I, I, I just threw it out for thought if, if they, it would make it where those were the words that we were defining. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have I mean, any problem with that. I like that yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good does. idea. Yeah, okay. it, it really doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put down, I will do that. I don't even think we need a motion for that. No, that's uh, okay. That's almost like a grammatical thing or something. That, may, that will really make them jump out. That'll be awesome. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then Bill, uh, had no suggestions. Um, Jeannie had a number of suggestions. Thank you, Jeannie. You're um, and I think I addressed all of them, except on Article 10, the format where there was a, 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 a line that was indented. Yeah. I could not change that, but I will look to my trustworthy staff when we're all done <laughs> they will put it in proper format yeah it just looks awkward that's all that's my style awkward <laughs> <laughs> so i will i when i'm marking that in my copy uh that was in article 10 uh come on uh section Ten nine, correct, Janie? Yes. Okay. So that oh, would. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I see it now. Uh, I think I adjust all of your other suggestions, whether they be. Did I? Yeah, there was just. Um, I tried to make any number that was spelled out to be the yes. number to be consistent. And I think you just missed a couple of those, Larry. Um, Go ahead. One sec. And you should know that the lawyer and me, we always spell out the number. Followed I think it's more formal. And followed by the number itself in parentheses. Uh, but I, the old charter had just numbers, so it's okay. But did you catch that I missed? Section 2-6. Hold on a sec. Yeah. What, yes, I'm looking at it. So in the one, two, three, the fourth line 10 still says T-E-N. Oh, yes. And the second to the last line 7 is still spelled out. Yep. Yes. <laughs> and... <laughs> <laughs> in section three three. Three three? Yep. Uh three two. Uh, I like having these articles in front of the section numbers. It's, it's three three. Uh, which one? Um the fourth and sixth line ten is still spelled out both both times. Son of a gun. <laughs> I have found someone more anal than me. <laughs> Any any more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a number, but it's um on section five four. Uh huh. The one two three the fourth line non residence isn't hyphenated, but it is elsewhere in all the other spots in the charter. Okay, so it should be non hyphen residence. I will hyphenate. Yeah. Oh. And that's it. Besides the. The issue I had with all the spacing, the spacing is very irregular. Yep. That's okay. minor. Okay. 
Uh, so that's Jeannie's comments. And I think I will correct those. The codification you fixed. No, no I other did. codification. Uh, I, what, what I did was I made a small codification and then I removed capital C in the body. Right. <clears throat> That's Jeannie. You're, you're through. Okay. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Marilyn, you had some uh, changes too. You found I, all of them. You fixed all of them. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Ralph, now Ralph Page is another issue. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ralph his mother. <laughs> Uh, Ralph Page, I think I addressed all of your issues. It, Ralph also has some quest, new questions because he doesn't believe in ending our uh, committee's tenure, uh, which we'll get to in due course. But did I address all of your revisions? So, Larry, I haven't. Um, printed out the update, but on number one, the recommendation. Uh, move that. Oh yes, yes. Um, I should point out, Ralph thought if in the beginning where I haven't in bold read um, about uh, capitalization. What did I put down? Um, so right after the preamble. Charter being capitalized. Uh, uh, amendments and, uh, and their dates uh, deleted, replaced in an index at the end, and uh, the article numbers, uh, you know, section 1-7. Um, I, I thought about that. Ralph said, why don't we put it on a separate piece of paper? And I, I suggest that we do that, but not until there is a review by the town council just to emphasize what we've done at the beginning. It's changed. Um, yeah. It's easily, I can remove that easily, but I think it's important to highlight what we're doing uh, at the beginning and it's attached. Okay. I mean, like I said, my thought is when we print up the charter right. that I don't think that language should be in there. I don't no, think I it's agree. necessary. I, I agree. Right. And that was my point. That's fine. Um, okay. Larry? What? Yes, Jeannie. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it belongs in the charter, but will the charter have um, a preface of a statement by our committee, like the Charter Review Commission, and, and it can be involved in, like, in an intro part? By our Something committee? Like no, yeah. I wouldn't think that we would. Okay, so no, no little intro saying that it was reviewed per the, you know, the per the charter at the year ending in zero and. Uh, only if we get paid for our time. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know that that's necessary. Okay. Um, I, anyone else think it would be? Well, you know, when we have zoning bylaw amendments, the zoning bylaw itself says it was adopted on such and such with amendments with a date. Uh -huh. um, you know, it, somewhere in the beginning of the of the document, so you know each time this document's been modified. Okay. That, you know, that's just a thought. Okay, but that could be at the end, or the beginning, or the or the beginning. <laughs> so is everything going to stay there? The the Charter Review Commission page and then the, the Citizens of East Long Meadow letter that's going to stay there too. That's in the original charter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought that was all staying. I thought, I thought yeah. so as well. Okay. I think for historical purposes that should stay. Yeah, and I like the fact that we're leaving our signatures in the front. So yeah, there those, you go. Those people can be blamed. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Some of us are still sitting here. Yeah, Larry, we are still here. <laughs> here barely. All uh, right. Yeah, I thought all of that was going to change. I mean, it would stay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Larry. Yes, sir. Just, just to be clear, so we're going to remove and put on a sec separate sheet from recommendation down to uh, just the last line above article. 
eventually, but initially I would suggest we leave it in its place for presentation to town council. Okay. It can be removed after their review. This is okay. just to give it more, yeah. you know, it's noticeable Yeah. that what we're doing. <clears throat> now you said this was gonna be in red? Well, my I have a color printer at work, and when I typed it up, it was in red. Oh, okay. <laughs> because because when you sent it out, it came out all black, so I didn't know. Well, I've got red. Me too. It, it's it's if you have if you show the markup, it's yeah. different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't okay. worry about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Red, blue, green. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, okay, so that was Ralph's recommendation. And Ralph, we'll get back to you on your suggested other items to discuss. Um, uh, I've got to bring up Jeannie's comment about the fact that open meeting law was in quotes. And the fact that it's in quotes, probably we can point fingers to the Collins Center, I'm told <laughs> by one of my colleagues. Um, and I don't know that it matters one way or another. Uh, it, if it bothers, I can delete the quotation marks. I don't think they're necessary. That's in section 2-4. But that's the way it's been in the original charter. So um, I, I would leave it. I, I, it has no import uh, to the substance of it. What do you think? Well, if no one's thinking, I'll leave it. I don't, I don't think it really matters, does it? No, it doesn't matter. No. No. Okay. Um, okay, next comment is from Dr. Frazier. Article 2, Section 4. Uh, and that's under council procedures. His question or comment is in the fifth paragraph down. He recalls a discussion of on the status of draft minutes and should that be addressed. Do I recall that? The answer is I don't recall, and I looked and I had no notes on that. But again, I rely on all of you to refresh our memories. Jeannie, do you recall any, is, is draft minutes looked at anywhere on, on other committees? You're at or article, or, section two, four, where in that? Uh, the fifth paragraph. Are you saying, Andy, it should be in there? No, I guess what I should ask is, do draft minutes play a part anywhere um, in, in Not here? Really. Or, no. no. I mean, they no. keep it posted till they're approved. Right. We don't deal with draft minutes. We, we approve minutes on a, at our, every, every meeting that we have. Right, and I think we don't deal with, with public records that if somebody asks for minutes, you have to say that they're draft or not approved or something. Right, so right. Reference that, but they really but we don't deal in draft minutes. Yeah, they don't hold no water till they're approved. Okay. No. All right, that's that's what I was after. Yeah. Thank you. Got it. Uh, uh, next comment is from Dr. Christensen. Um, uh, he had a question on the table of contents. I revised that again Sunday. I, I, I hope the pages uh, accurately state the page numbers. Yeah, I had started that email before you sent out okay. the revise. That's why I wrote revise next to that, okay. Larry. So. And you had a question on supermajority definition. Yeah. What, 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 tell me what you were thinking. I feel like it's either missing a 
punctuation or a article or something. Well, Miss Miss Cheney pointed out to me, and I did move some punctuation on that. I moved I moved a comma. Yes, and yeah. I put a space in. You put a comma after council, so it, it yeah. That work? I think it worked. In the in the revised one? Yeah. Yeah. How many so, times did you revise it, Larry? Uh, Sunday. Uh, it only took me two hours on this Sunday. But you worked very hard. Yeah, you shall I read? Good. Shall I read it to you, Tom? No, not if there's a if 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 you've taken care of it. I'm going to go ahead and trust your uh, trust. Well, don't your, trust uh, me. Jeannie pointed it out. I, <laughs> I it's in there. Okay. It, it's, yeah. it, it's changed. I think it. I hope it, it resolves your your concern. It does. And, and school committee is in there too. Yep. That was another change we had. And your next comment was on section 3-3. Three -three. Was that the was that the 46 months? I was I was mostly having fun with you on that. <laughs> I had the same thought when I when I saw that 46 months. That's an odd number. I don't remember voting well, on you that. You were just pulling my leg. Well, the four really should be crossed uh, out if we're going to keep right. it. Yeah, that's all. So that doesn't even appear there. No, the four. The four is just not crossed out. So if you were to accept change, it's forty-six. Oh, I see. I see. All right. So yes, that's been corrected. It's six months. Are we looking at the right, the same space? Yeah, yep. mine. Mine okay. will be six months. Six months. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Okay, so well, I've got 46, but that's all right. So I think the cross out is on the same exact line for the four. Oh, I got you. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I believe he crossed out the four, but it landed on the same exact spot. So it doesn't that's even funny. look like it's crossed out. Uh, right. Because mine's really bold, that middle line. Well, mine is too. I'm I, looking I at think mine. that's what ended up I happening. Did it. There you go. He did that on purpose just to catch us. Of course he did. <laughs> yeah. All the way. Yeah. So the revised charter that I sent, does it say six months in both place? Yes. You're looking at 3-3, three three, the second paragraph? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. I see six months written twice. All right. So that's good, right? Yep. Okay. All right. And your last one is one brought up by numerous people my ineptitude with spelling uh, i put no residence uh, <laughs> it became non residence so thank you on that so uh, larry just while i have the while i have you real just we we should just make a note to double check the table of contents after you remove language and things get moved around again yeah i did that I did that the old-fashioned way. Um, and let me see if I can show you how I did. After I was totally finished with this revision, which will be revised again, I and I can't find it. I actually wrote down. I went to each article and then wrote down the page number. But I will do that again when we have eventually a finished version. Right, because I would have, I mean, things things are eventually going to move. Like you take out all that yep. red stuff at the, the beginning that you were talking about, your notes and stuff. So, yep. just I will double check that. Okay. okay. So, any other, uh, that's the end of your, your suggestions and revisions. Um, I will do, based on what we just discussed, a, a further revision of that which will won't take much effort and then now we have some suggestions for further discussion or review uh, and I'll take them in the order we receive unless someone has before we get into that and hearing none um, you all received, I think I forwarded to you, a, a letter from Pat Henry 
Uh, the one I have is dated February 4th. And there was also another one he had sent on January 18th. Um, and uh, uh, at least two of our members uh, suggested we talk about it. Um, even though I think we've addressed this issue more than once in the past. Um, so I will open up um, discussion of his letter and I'll try and, um, well, I, I will open the discussion. Does everyone have that letter in front of them or nearby? No. no. Okay. Which, which, which date are we talking about, Larry? Uh, Pat sent it to me on February 4th. So I would have sent it to all of you either the 4th or the 5th. Was that on term limits? Uh, January 19, I think. Or is this one the power powers of the council versus the manager? Yeah. Uh, let me. Oh, yeah. The yeah. February 4th or 5th letter. Um, <clears throat> is, yeah, it was yeah. sent. Go ahead. It was sent on February 4th. Yeah, I got it. Okay, I'll look for it. Yeah, Larry sent it to us on February 4th. Right. <clears throat> The title of its power of powers of the council versus the manager. Correct. <laughs> Correct. <clears throat> and I, I, to, I, I don't want to summarize it on, uh, and, and be incorrect. Um, there, the question is, he does say has created the charter created a strong manager weak council government structure. Um, and he talks about uh, uh, the disagreement on an issue between the council and the manager. And the council has veto uh, rights under certain limited appointments or in, or their ultimate um, power is to terminate the manager. Uh, he speaks of a zero effort on the part of the charter to create a symbiotic cooperative approach to the two branches, joint responsibilities for town government. Uh, a very similar issue exists with respect to the de departmental reorganizations. The council has zero input um, and can only approve or reject an organizational change proposed by the manager with an up or down vote. Um, it's not unreasonable to anticipate that a perfectly fine reorganization plan could fail to be approved over some nit that four councils object to that could easily have been fixed prior to the presentation of the, if the charter were to allow some measure of in, information sharing, cooperation and collegiality between the branches. Um, all right, kids, uh, comments, suggestions, thoughts? Well, I'll begin then. Um, the, this issue of whether there's communication between the town manager and cooperation, uh, it was intentional on the part of the original commission and the voters of the town agreed that we would have a strong town manager and that was where the power on the day-to-day -day decisions would lie and the commission gave some authority on certain issues to the town council the issue of um, uh, communication and talking about issues I, I don't know that it's an issue that should or how it could go into the charter. Um, the charter uh, gives uh, an annual evaluation uh, between the town council and the town manager. And perhaps during those discussions, goals can be set. Uh, if there's 
if uh, a majority of the town council feels that there's lack of communication or there should be some discussion or et cetera, uh, that, uh, that could be a goal and evaluated on that, whether it be on an annual basis or more, uh, on a, uh, more frequent timetable. But I don't know that anything has changed regarding and I don't haven't heard a, an outpouring from the community to change that structure of the powers and how the original commission divided them. Uh, I and so those are my thoughts. Uh, I I personally don't uh, have a. Um, uh, I, I'm not. Con I I. I not convinced that the change would be in the best interest of the town to switch that um, pendulum. Uh, uh, and, and let me just remind people, the essence of the charter really was change of government, town meeting format, the town meeting was in essence now the town council. The um, town manager took over the roles, not just of the Board of Selectmen, uh, but uh, a number of other elected boards. Um, you know, and I'll be frank, the issue recently of the appointment of a police chief, police chiefs were appointed in the old structure and the Board of Selectmen didn't go to a town meeting and say, we'd like to appoint John Jones as police chief. The selectmen on their own did that, uh, or a sergeant or whoever it was, uh, perhaps the selectmen might ask for advice or input from uh, citizens in town, which I know they did in the past, and but they weren't obligated to do that, and nor did and the town meeting um, did not have that direct vote on who they were appointing. So um, I understand some people may think that the division of powers should be <laughs> changed, but uh, I don't see the need or the uh, groundswell for that change. There you go. Miss Marilyn? Mm -hmm. Without getting into the weeds, I did respond to Larry um, with, on this particular email. And a lot of what Larry just expressed is what I wrote in my email with respect to the legislative versus the, versus the executive branch of government in dealing with, i.e. the police chief position. Um, as a counselor who participated in the process, and Ralph can certainly correct me if I'm incorrect, um, I, you know, there were some issues that came up, but they came up primarily based on some misconception and some behavior of certain counselors. Simple as that. Um, I felt once, once we met as a council and made a decision um, to waive the, um, the powers of the charter so that we could move forward and appoint the chief in a timely manner, or that Mary could appoint the chief in a timely manner, so that this could be taken place before we are, you know, Jeff left, everything fell into place very nicely. Um, I don't believe that we have the charge to change the charter to this degree. The town voted for a strong town manager. But the weak council part I struggle with because I don't look at the council as being a weak council. There's a division of responsibilities within the council and within the town manager. We each have areas that we have responsibility for. I'm not in it for the power. Um, I, I believe that we are making the right decision that if we were to change the town manager's position or duties and dilute them, we're actually diluting the entire government structure that the, com that the, count the community voted on and that it would be the responsible of an elected charter commission to do that. Yes, Andy. So <clears throat> my comment was, was this a 
a one-time situation? And if so, does it does that really require making change to the chart? A uh, bill. I'm just going to echo with what everybody else is saying that this, and I don't want to steal Andy's question here, but to what Marilyn and Larry have both said, the town overwhelmingly approved this charter with a strong town manager form of government. And our charge here is just to tweak it, not make major changes. To Marilyn's point, if we try to make a major change, you're going to end up going and electing a whole new charter commission and starting all over again. That's not what the the voters voted on four years ago. And if it's a communication issue, well, that isn't, if it's lack of communication, there's no place in the charter to address a lack of communication between a town manager and the town council. That's something they have to work out for themselves. Yeah, I, I had made the comment that couldn't, couldn't some conversation take place between these two to yeah. resolve the issue rather yeah. than going this route. Right. So we're saying the same thing. Yeah, we are. Yep. Jeannie? Yeah, I think that the powers of the council and town manager, we've talked about a lot indirectly throughout the whole charter review, you know, the town manager article and the, and the town council. I think we've talked about it. And we've talked about that issue of the power and the balance. So I, I don't think we ignored it, but we've talked about it a great deal. And not many changes were made. Yes, Tom. Um, I guess I'll just echo the sentiment. That was my response to you, Larry, in the first place. Um, this is this is the the government that was voted on, um, and the the communication piece. Yeah, that that's something that that is I think in both branches' best interest to to have a good open line of communication. And I don't know that that's a charter issue. Okay, um, Ralph. So the only thing I'm gonna chime in on is under uh, the sheet that we got under the solution, number three, at the very last line, he's got remove the council veto authority as far as for the appointment of planning board, board of health, housing authority, et cetera. Um, I don't see an issue with removing it for those appointed boards. Um, where are we are looking? Ralph? Yeah. I am. I'm looking at um, the sheet that was sent. Powers of the council versus the manager. Yeah. Under the section that says solution. Number three. Hold on, kiddo. Hold on, kiddo. <laughs> uh, I I remember seeing that, but of course I don't have it in front of me. So can you read it for us? Sure. Um, he's got listed under solution number three, mm -hmm. require the manager to submit the names of all board appointments to the Board of Assessors, Board of Public Works, Library, Planning Board, Board of Health and Housing Authority, at least three business days before making the appointment. And then he adds, remove the council veto authority provision. Um, on, on those particular appointments? On those particular appointments. And what section are we looking at? He doesn't have it on the, on the list. No. Um, what was that, under multiple member bodies, I think? Yeah, yeah. it might be there, yeah. So there's a, there's a veto provision that if the council doesn't like who she appoints, to one of those boards within 45 days, we can veto it. Um, I don't see a purpose in vetoing someone she appoints to, whether it be the planning board or um, you know the library trustees. Um, I think it's more important that she submits the name to us ahead of time before appointment, just in case there's something we know as a council that maybe the town manager is unaware of to make her aware of it. Um, and then the 45 day uh, time frame um, we found with the police chief is excessive. Um, I mean, we held a, a separate meeting, which I'm not quite sure was actually appropriate or not, um, but to basically waive the rest of the time frame and waive the charter requirements. 
All right, so the section is 5-4. Five, five yeah, <clears throat> so his suggestion, and you, and you are supporting it, is in the second sentence where the appointment of members of Board of Assessors, Public Works, Library, Trustees, Planning Board, Housing Authority, and Board of Health, the council would have the same veto power that they have for the police chief, fire chief, etc. That's the way it is written right now. Right, and the suggestion is for under 5-4, those particular appointments, you're suggesting, and he is as well, that the council not have veto power over their appointments? Yeah, I don't, I personally myself don't see a reason uh, for it. Um, I think waiting the 45 days and all was very cumbersome. Uh -huh. um, I think the town manager ties her hands a little bit, um, trying to figure out, you know, who's good to appoint, who isn't, instead of who's qualified for the position because she's all, well, right now, she would be afraid that, well, maybe they're gonna veto this person or that person. Yep. Do um, you or Bill recall why, why the original commission put that veto power for those particular roles? The only thing I can remember is we talked about this for quite a while, and we talked about length of time. But we also got into the weeds about talking about contracts and stuff. So how do you, you know, I don't remember the exact conversation. I just remember bits and pieces. I mean, like I said, I'm not against keeping it in. Mm -hmm. uh, it just becomes a little bit cumbersome is all. Um, you know, especially when she has to make the appointment. And then it's basically like you're walking on eggs for the next six weeks on whether the person's gonna be vetoed and uh, said, oh, sorry, I know you had the appointment, but we don't want you. But I think that was the conversation, Ralph, mm -hmm. walking on eggshells for six weeks. Has, has there been any issue in the last few years on the council of these type of appointments? Not that I'm aware of. So the only thing I can say is when we had our first town manager, um, a lot of times we didn't even know the appointment took place. Um, it wasn't presented at a meeting and that's all been changed. Um, it's working, it's working the way the charter specifically says it should now where the appointment is, we're notified. And like I said, if we don't take any action, the person's good to go. Um, we're, like I said, with the first town manager, it was who's on that board, how'd they get on there? When did they get appointed? So again, it may be something with more communication than anything. So why wouldn't you leave it then? So if we had a town manager that just appointed it and not would not tell the town council, uh, the only thing I could, it wouldn't be important for the council to know somehow uh, or a compromise position uh, shortening the period of time for those particular appointments. So, um, all right, we're, people, we're going to meet again next Tuesday because we have other things that we won't be able to get to today. Why don't we think about this issue, and we'll we'll re 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 review this this suggestion. Um, the, Ralph, while I got you and you have that sheet from Pat, the other, there must have been two other solution suggestions. And have we addressed those? That was the only one uh, that I had an issue with. The other um, single representative. He had four solutions altogether. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like hey, number Ralph. two is pretty much the same as number three, only it has to do with uh, the police chief, fire chief. Yep. 
Can you send that particular sheet to everyone so we all have it? I have it. Yeah, I've I got it. I've got it. an attachment to Pat's email. Oh, is it on the February 4th email? Yes. 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 You it. sent it. All right. I yeah, know I, I, I missed it too. I didn't print it up. It was at the bottom of the email and I didn't look for it. All right. Yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm just looking at it on my computer. Okay. Yeah. I opened the email up. All right. We will discuss it at our next meeting. Um, that's fine. Uh, we have, we have, uh, Ralph was the next one who had some suggestions for us. Ralph, the floor is yours. So my first suggestion was that 45 day period. It states that, um, or at the next regular, uh, next regular town council meeting. Um, the problem with saying regular town council meeting is a regular meeting occurs once a month. I'd like to remove the word regular and just say the next town council meeting so that if the council chooses to hold a special meeting three days after uh, the announcement mm -hmm. that the charter's okay with us um, saying, hey, we're good with your uh, person, let's go forwards where by keeping the regular in, we've still got to wait the full month. Is, is that on the same subject, Ralph? It's on the same subjects. Like I said, wherever it says um, that uh, the count, town council members by roll call vote within 45 days, it says, or at the next regular town council meeting, whichever comes first. So it's during the veto power. So is that throughout the charter? Is that what you're recommending? That was throughout the charter. So I believe there's three locations for it. Um, yeah, because it's not changing anything. It's just taking out the word regular. Right. It still makes you go to another council meeting. Right. Yeah, actually, Jeff, it's on, in section uh, 3-2, um, number 1, 3-2, uh, number 16, and section uh, or article yeah. five, section four. So it's in three locations in yeah. the charter. Okay. And I would just remove the word regular. So that way there, it's just at the next town council meeting. What was the last section, Larry? I mean, Ralph? Five, four. Um, five, four. Thank you. So Ralph, go over that one more time for us uh, uh, slow people. The removal of regular. So the charter mandates that we hold regular town meetings, mm -hmm. regular council meetings. Mm -hmm. A regular council meeting occurs once a month on the second Tuesday. So if someone's um, appointed, we technically have to wait till that next regular meeting um, or the 45 days. What we did for the police chief is literally within a week, we held another town council meeting oh, okay. and we waived the requirements. And that way there, Mary could move more smoothly. There was no objection to the person. So why make them hang out for, you know, a month or more? All right. Um, and, and the decision to have it the second Tuesday of every month is by your internal procedures? Um, we had to create a bylaw a by per the charter. The charter requires that we create a bylaw uh, stating when and where uh, regular meetings will be held. Okay. Um, any discussion? Uh, I agree. I yeah. agree. Uh, so in order to implement that, we'd have to have a motion. So Larry, I will move um, that under section uh, three, two, uh, number one, three, mm -hmm. two, number 16, and article five, uh, section four, the last line, that the word regular, uh, which uh, immediately precedes the town council meeting, uh, be removed. Uh, made I'll by second Ralph. that. Second by Bill, discussion. Seeing and hearing none, 
Uh, all those in favor, Bill? Yes. Larry Levine, yes. Jeff? Yes. Marilyn? Yes. Tom? Yes. Ralph? Yes. Andy? I didn't hear you. Hey, you're off. He's yes. Good. Yes. Good man. All right. So <laughs> that's approved unanimously. Ralph, your second suggestion. So actually, Larry, I'm going to jump over the second one for right now and okay. go to the third because it's very simple. Okay. Um, this is in relation to Article 6, Section 3, the Capital Improvement Program. Uh -huh. So um, under number D, under the adoption, uh -huh. second line, it refers to it as the Capital Improvement Plan. And up top and throughout the rest of it, it's all referred to as the capital improvement program. My question is, do we just switch that to uh, we're adopting the capital improvement program? Right. I think it's more. You sound like, you sound like Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that again, Ralph? Article six. Article, arc, ah, Article six, section three which is the capital improvement program under number D, the adoption, uh, the second line um, says resolution adopt the capital improvement plan. Okay. And it's the only place plan is mentioned everywhere. No. Well, I it's take that C. back. C it's a plan and C too, Ralph. Same yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. Um, so is there a difference between program, plan, or the words interchangeable? Well, I'm looking if there's a definition and there is none. Um, so um, well, we could go to the top and instead of calling it the capital improvement program, call it the capital improvement plan. Well, either way, you'd have to designate it throughout. So I, I would suggest if you want to change and make it uniform throughout section 6-3, you bring a motion to either have it programmed throughout or planned throughout. So is there a feeling amongst us whether you like the word plan or program? Plan. 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 <laughs> Plan sounds better than program. <laughs> Larry, I will make a motion that under Article 6, Section 3, um, we uniformly change the wording so that it becomes the Capital Improvement Plan. Second. Who, who made the second? Tom. Tom. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor, Bill Fonseca? Yes. Larry Levine, yes. Jeff Bosworth? Yes. Marilyn Richards? Yes. Tom Christensen? Yes. Ralph Page? Yes. Andy Frazier? Yes. Good. So that's unanimous. And our time is up. <laughs> uh, we are allowed a few minutes extension. I, I took the yes. liberty of asking Dr. Uh, Mackey, and he said we have 15, 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes if we want to use it. Does everyone, so everyone okay with 15 minutes? Yeah, All right. Sure. All right, but All right. we have to stop no later than 545. All right, Ralph, continue, please. So Article 8, Section 1, we modified language, and with doing so, we added that um, the person will also give their printed name. And I'm just curious if that was on purpose. Um, typically, uh, petition papers um, is a signature and an address. And I, yeah, I don't know if we can require the printed name or not. If we, I it's think just something I saw. I presume the reason for the printed name is that we could not read the signature name. And how would you check the voting list? 
otherwise. So I would agree with you if all petitions were like that and all nomination papers were like that. Okay. But we're only discussing that with citizen relief mechaniz mechanisms. Ah, okay. I mean. Hmm. Jeannie. <laughs> Jeannie? The nomination papers that we give out is a template that's given to us by the state. Right. It doesn't include the printed name, but we, we recently had a citizen initiative uh, petition come through a couple times because it was done in error the first time. And I generated those forms and the printed name is very, very helpful. And if, if that's something that we can alter as a town, I would, I would, I would be all for the printed name. So that Do we have that authority? Hmm? Do we have that authority? I believe we do. Okay. I can, I can double check. Well, we will definitely have the authority once it goes in the charter. <laughs> well, yeah, I know that. <laughs> I'm talking, is there any MGL that prohibits that? I can check. Okay. I'm writing down the gene. It does get very difficult. What's that? Exactly. It's very difficult to decipher these names. Yes. Oh, yeah. But Ralph, your point is that if we can allow it on 8-1, there are other places we should do the same? Well, I'm just thinking as a whole, like through Jeannie, you know, when she gets uh, the nomination signatures, yep. um, obviously, like she just said, that's a template from the state that they get. And, yep. But no, I, I understand the reasoning why. I just want to make sure that we're looking at the signature and not just the printed name um because you're verifying the signature petition papers can be something that's created by the by the petitioner too as long as it has all the correct information on it so i think adding a column for printed name isn't going to change the body okay. of the, the petition okay i mean no i'm i'm good with it i think it'll make life easier yeah. i just wanted to verify that that was something that we intentionally did the answer is, is, yes. is there anything that says that uh, the template that you used by the MGL that you can't uh, add to that? Or is that just a guideline or is that a mandatory? You mean the nomination papers? Yeah. They're provided to us by the state. So I, I'm really not sure if it's guidance or mandatory, but I can check on that. But that's really nothing to do with what we're doing here. But yeah. if you're curious, I can find out. Okay, so we'll hold off on voting on that until Jeannie gets back to us. Yeah, in fact, the citizen uh, relief thing that came through, it didn't have the printed com, so I added it on. Okay. So myself, but like I said, even the petitioner can create their own, their own template as long as it has the information that's needed. Right. And, it's, and it was, you know, approved by the town attorney, so. And so, Larry, my last uh, mm -hmm. my last question that I had is basically the same as Chris Solner's. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to go over it, and we'll use her instead of me because I've already um, used my allotted time. Okay. <laughs> Plus, I get to blame it on her then. Okay. <laughs> She's listening. <laughs> All right. Um, so we have a letter from a citizen, from Christine Sonier, and she is bringing up Article 6, Section 1, which is the budget process, and that has five steps within it. And the issue that she raises in her letter is specifically step four, but I'm also uh, bringing to our committee's attention uh, about step two, is the school committee, um, there's a line in, in step four uh, that, uh, it says 
By May 1st, the town manager will submit a proposed operating budget for all town agencies to the town council, which shall include the school budget as adopted by the school committee, comma, for the ensuing fiscal year. And uh, uh, Christine, in her letter, has brought to our attention that there appears to be a difference of opinion whether the town manager has the ability to uh, discuss and negotiate on behalf and of the eventual submitted budget to the town council, the presented budget by the school committee, or whether she has no latitude and has to present the school committee budget as is in stone to the town council. And I, I will also point out in step two, the town manager and the town council shall meet uh, to discuss the town council's priorities for the upcoming fiscal year and discuss the budget format. Uh, and the town manager will provide the town council and the school committee a copy of the draft budget by April 1st. Step three, town manager shall meet with the superintendent of schools to discuss the upcoming fiscal year budget prior to the submittal of the proposed operating budget. It's my recollection and understanding that the original charter commission felt that the school committee budget and the school committee discusses internally and passes their own budget, once submitted to the town manager, would be treated in like um, uh, review as any other town department budget presented to the town manager. Uh, that the town manager would have uh, the right to sit down and discuss with the school committee, the uh, school superintendent, just like the DPW superintendent, their budgets, make suggestions, listen, etc. And then based on that, put a proposed recommended budget together for the whole town, including the school committee, and may, it might vary from what was submitted to the town council. The, town, the school committee would have the right as probably any other town department to come forward at the town council hearings and give their opinion why their position was in the best interest of the town as opposed to the recommendation of the town manager. Um, however, that's not the interpretation that her letter suggests and what we're hearing, uh, rather, it's been uh, presented by others that she doesn't have that discretion. So I, I look for your views on this. I also look for our other two original commission members to pipe in uh, and what your thoughts are on this particular issue. Yes, Tom. So uh, in, in her letter, she says that there's a stipulation that the school committee budget cannot be altered by the town manager. Where, where is that? Well, I guess someone might be interpreting that line, which shall include the school budget as adopted by the school committee as mm -hmm. limiting her ability to vary it at all. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that interpretation is accurate. Um, um, so I guess that that was the confusing. I, I, I had to read her letter twice because it sounded like she wanted it removed because of one reason. And then all the reasons were, were, were arguing the other way. And then I read it again and came up with what you were saying. And I'm just confused why the 
the school department wouldn't be treated like every other department. And, um, I, and maybe I'm just not familiar with the procedure. Well, the procedure would be, even in the, in the old form of government under town meeting, the, um, all the departments, including the school committee, gave their budgets to eventually to the finance slash appropriations committee who would review all town departments and then they would make a recommendation to the town meeting floor and uh, frequently uh, several town departments could get up and question and ask to amend uh, because they wanted what they want uh, had re requested and it was up to the town meeting to make that decision. The state law allows, once the budgets are approved specifically for the school committee, that the school committee itself has the unilateral authority to, um, within their budget, to move numbers within their budget. And they are given that authority by state law. But the question is, what happens until the point where, in our case now, the town council approves? Uh, do they go through the same process in it as any other town department? And so she's asked us to review that. And if we agree with her interpretation, then perhaps it'd be best to just modify some of it, and it'd be very few words make it crystal clear that's what the original commission wanted. Okay, thank you. So, yes, Ralph. Larry, it was my understanding being on the charter commission that, again, she, the school committee would be treated like other departments. They submit their uh, budget to the town manager. The town manager compiles everything, makes any adjustments based on what she wanted to submit to the town council. Mm -hmm. um, until this specific language was brought up as adopted by the school committee, um, I had just interpreted it was that way. And then all of a sudden when you start looking at it and I actually read specifically that, it sounds like she has to right now turn in the school committee has approved a budget and she has no right to do anything with it. And I don't believe that's what the commission set out to do. I believe we set out to give the town manager authority over all departments, including the school, not exactly line item, but you know, total uh, expenses. Um, I, I agree with Chris, I would remove as adopted by the school committee from that language. Um, uh, well, uh, uh, two things. Uh, yes, and we can, we will continue this discussion next Tuesday. And we are out of time, people. Uh, so, unless there's some emergency issue, uh, our next meeting will be next Tuesday, which is March 2nd, 3rd? 2nd. 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 At 4.30. And unless there's other business, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Jeff made the motion and Marilyn seconded. All those in favor, Bill? Yes. Larry, yes. Jeff? Uh, yes. Uh, Marilyn? Yes. Tom? Yes, sir. Ralph? Yes. Andy? You're on mute. You moved. Nod your head. <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm on All mute right. again. And yes. I will, yeah. yes. And I will send everyone a further revised charter with the changes you've authorized me to do today subject to further changes at our future meetings so everyone Great. stay well thank you okay. thank you, you. Bye. 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 Bye.